So I'm making this video to explain a few things about the way the concert rigging goes and what could have possibly gone wrong, not confirming what happened or what did not happen. So to start with concerts, you have your video screen. However big it may be, it'll have a few points that'll hold it up. I work in the United States and I cannot say whether Hong Kong has the safety regulations we have as far as how many motors hold a screen. This screen in particular had two points. What appears to be connected somewhere on the outside here and here from what I could see online. Now, the way these are hung is you have your beams, which are all in the ceiling, wherever they're shaped, some kind of grid pattern, and then they hang wires. Now a wire will go around the beam, connect to make a loop. Another one will go around the beam, connect to make a loop. The shackles are what finish those loops, and those will either go to deck chains or go to the motor, however they hold their point. So this one will be a different length than that one. It's not exactly the scale. These loops will be at the same point, and so say it's here. That will then come straight down, and the chain is hooked on to that shackle. The chain goes all the way down and is on the motor, which hangs there. Your motor is hooked onto your video screen. That is connected using what's called a header. A header is maybe four or five, six feet long, however big they are for whatever screens they're using. That header then has a ring in it, or, or a hole drilled in it, which your shackle goes into and that's what your motor hooks onto. So you can imagine a bunch of headers the whole way across the top of the screen. And those go the whole way across. And then you got another chain that would be connected on here. And that would go up to your grid and it would be connected to your grid as well. In theory, one motor, one chain should easily hold the entire wall. You shouldn't need two chains. Obviously, for safety, they put more than one chain on. So this would then get attached in. The header has little tiny pins that come down, and it all locks into, depending on the style and who makes it, those header pins lock into the top cells for the video screen. Video screens are a bunch of cells all going however they are. So say it's two feet wide by maybe four feet tall. And then you'd have a bunch like that. So then four down, that'd be a 16 foot wall by however many across it is. These ones in particular, I haven't found a video with enough clarity to know what the resolution is, but that's how the rigging goes for it. And then on the back of it, on the back of your panels is where all of your electrical runs. It goes the whole way down in series and it just keeps going. And then you have a data connection. So they'd come in the top, come in the middle, wherever they go and that will be off your truss. Your truss is a separate hang that is up in the air and it'll have a cable that comes down off it with a strain relief tied off. And that will come down and then tie into the back of these panels. This is a double-faced panel array. So these cables are gonna connect right in the top and there will be no slack hanging into it. It'll pretty much be at tension the whole way. So when you see the video or when you watch the videos and you see that there is like a cable or a wire, I've heard people refer to them, it should be a chain. And so what I can't tell, um, cause I haven't seen a video looking up at the sky or uh, up at the air, but I believe it's just the cable, the data cable that is still connected. The chain, I believe broke somewhere at this point here where the header connects to the cell so while it's up here in the air it broke so if you imagine a crowd down here it broke right in here is what my guess is because I couldn't see a motor laying on the ground or anything like that also you couldn't hear or see any chain dropping all you see is whip and I believe the whip is just the power and data going to it so when it drops, one side drops first, 
and then the other side drops. And I think these locks were not all made. Now this is my theory. I don't have any proof or evidence and I don't work in Hong Kong, so I can't say for sure. But generally the way we do it in the United States is all of these are built using an array. So this will be four to six cells per cart. And so there'll be a break like this, a break like that. So that whole wall will be made up of a bunch of sections of cells. This header will be broken here, this header will be broken here. So it's three sections of headers, which realistically should have had another motor hang off the middle, but they might not need that header if they were only doing two hangs. It's recommended to have headers going the whole way across, even if you don't plan on hanging off the middle, just to cause rigidity so that this will stay square and you won't have to worry about any flex in your panels. But either way, headers go across. Those headers stay connected to the LED panels the whole time, and those are using little pins that lock them in. A popular style I see is a pin like this. You pull it down, slide it over, slide it up, that's locked. Down basically unlocks it, slide it over, and then it's now out of the hole, slide it up. So this is the locking motion here. So you imagine your pin in this position. If you're not inspecting this from tour to tour, or, or from show to show on the same tour, that pin could easily vibrate down and vibrate over into the unlock position. It's inside the trucks, it goes back up in the air, it's in that unlock position. And there could be a bunch of, or there is a bunch of these pins that go way across. And if one or two of them is, are not locked, that could be where your failure comes from. But, that's my best explanation of how video panels work in general. I've worked with probably three to five different brands, companies that make these video walls. Generally, all of them work the same. They all work off headers. They're all hung by chain motors. The only time it won't be hung by chain motors if the screen it moves up and down side to side like while the show is going on. If they move like that, a lot of times they use cable because the cable is a smoother action. But I've never seen a cable fail, especially not like how it did in, in that video where it released everything. Sometimes cables will slip, but not in this type of application. Or if you're using cables, generally you'll add an extra one ton cable motor instead of a one ton chain motor. Generally, one tons are what are used. So that'd be a one ton chain motor. That'd be a one ton chain motor. I can't say because I don't see the motor in the video what weight motors they were using for this. So could have failed up here in the air. I doubt it, but it's possible. These are all cables that generally have burlap put in between them. Burlap is what cushions it. Um, the cable so it doesn't cut on the beams. And then the shackles connecting it from the two cables and drop down. So as far as I can tell, that's that's what I can give you guys as far as information on how it works. As far as what actually happened, uh, you'd have to give a good video or send me a link um, with more detail on... Uh, the graphics and stuff where you can really get in and less pictures of the people and more pictures of what is up in the air. From what I could tell, I saw one picture after the incident and that was of the crushed cell, which I can tell you right now, the way that cell crushed from hitting the person, it's not made as strong as the ones we do in the United States, which could be the only chance of the guy living um, because of the ones we have here they're a lot more durable um, if it lands on you it's straight metal rigging on the back of them they can make them very big very heavy and if they land on you they won't break they'll just crush you anyways thanks for letting me do this small explanation and see you next time